It's been over three years since the launch of law enforcement operation Ukai Mulau. The operation birthed in September 2018 and has seen thousands of suspects arrested for various crimes. In some instances, we've seen chaotic scenes of police clashing, for example, with illegal miners, the Zamazamas. It sure has not been an easy one for the Gauteng police officers. Well, to talk to us about the progress they are making, the successes, the challenges of operation Ukai Mulau, I'm joined in the studio now by by Major General Tomi Mtombeni. He's the Deputy Provincial Police Commissioner here in Gauteng. Uh, General, uh, Major General Mtombeni, good afternoon. Thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon, brother, and good afternoon to the viewers. I see you came very well prepared. You've got your document uh, in front of you when we want to have this conversation. But overall, I am told, I've seen various comments, that Operation Ukai Mulau is successful, it's working. Is it really working? Um, once more again, uh, good afternoon uh, to the viewers. Uh, we'll say, uh, really, uh, Operation Ukai Mulau, it is working, uh, but what we... Uh, have to mention or worth mentioning is that uh, this uh, Operation Ukai Mulau is an operation which is uh, emanating from the state of the province address, the state of uh, the nation address by the president, and of which is linked in Gauteng, is linked to uh, growing Gauteng together vision 2030 which is having a specific uh, visions. Uh, for example, I will um, indicate one of those. It will be an issue of a partnership, you know, policy. Yes. The issue of ensuring that uh, we make sure that the communities out there, they are and uh, they feel safe. But uh, over and above that, one has to indicate that, uh, because the question might come to say, why do we have it over time? That um, the contingency plan which we have put relating to Operation Okai Mulau, we have put it into phases. Uh, for example, from um, a specific years, or 2019 to 2020, one will say it's a stabilization, while the, the second phase is to ensure that we normalize, which is for currently. And um, we're looking forward to ensure that we sustain on this uh, okay. uh, operation. We've Ukraine. seen the recent crime stats, and they give us all these kind of figures. Uh, but, but I don't want to delve into that, because we want to talk about this operation. Just last weekend, I mean, more than 700 suspects you arrested. More than 700 uh, suspects were arrested throughout the province for different crimes. I mean, that's the number that we've seen being, being mentioned just from this operation Ukai, Ukai Mulau. Do you, I mean, what gives you that focus? that you are able to nab so many, so many suspects across the province in one weekend? Uh, Braden and the viewers, uh, we have to take note that this operation is uh, integrated for the law enforcement agency. We're having a partnership uh, with, uh, for example, the security industry, the tracker, which is enhancing the E2 project, which was launched by the minister and, of course, by the National Commissioner in a free state. So being integrated, one other part is that um, when we, before we start operating on the second phase, we do have the detectives, those who go and look for the wanted suspects. The wanted suspects, it's uh, the database which is linked to the fingerprints. So we're having so many of those people. So over... Over and again, when we're doing these operational activities, you'll realize that the bigger chunk is coming from uh, this uh, suspect raiding. But I must indicate that this integrated uh, effort, while we are working more special when we are on the roadblocks, we are in a position to can uh, get or to can detect items which might have been stolen or house robbed in uh, you, people's properties. Yeah, you mentioned the use of fingerprints, but you can't catch criminals who are not documented because they're not in the database. How difficult is that for you in Gauteng to catch undocumented criminals? Well, uh, uh, the issue of fingerprints is that uh, when you get arrested and then um, your fingerprints get taken, 
and then they are on the database for the... So South you build African. up the database yes, as you, as you up, are arrested? Yes, okay. you build up Wh the Which database. are the biggest crimes that give you a headache in Gauteng? Well, uh, as I've indicated that um, we linking up Operation Ukai Mulao with uh, the state of the province address, the state of uh, the nation address. Um, there are key priorities which is linked to the province, yes, of course, by the Premier on his uh, delivery of the state of the province address. We are having uh, the crimes like uh, gender-based violence, which includes uh, women and children. And, uh, of course, we are having also other crimes which is linked to, to the trios. You are hijackings, you are business robberies, uh, you are house robberies as well, which is really uh, creating also fear to the community, it's creating a panic. So those are mostly uh, some of the crimes which one will indicate that those are the crimes which is having a sense of... Well, where are the challenges for you? I mean, Operation Ukai Mulao, as I quoted, I saw this report of 700 suspects just in one weekend. You say you've been running it for years and since 2017 as an integrated kind of a, of a campaign. Where are the challenges you're facing? We keep on hearing, for example, that police don't have enough resources. Well, uh, the issue of... Uh, resources is not one it's not one of which one can uh, you know advance to because um, uh, any organization you, you realize that you, you don't uh, have enough of what you are expecting or in terms of us in terms of a fixed establishment because fixed establishment is linked to the treasury what is that what we're supposed to be having uh, one will indicate really to indicate that uh, what we're having we can do with what we have and uh, we are making inroads as this operation Ukaimola was week in, week out. But the challenge really is that um, uh, given the fact that um, the crimes there are still, you know, happening or occurring, which affects the community. Uh, that is one challenge, but what is important is that uh, we have to have that collaborations because you have to make sure that you uh, collaborate with the community, you collaborate with uh, the security industry, other law enforcement agency, and most importantly is the community because these crimes do happen within the community, by the community. Is, so, is the community collaborating properly with you in your view? I mean, we, 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 we criticize you a lot. You come under a lot of criticism as the men and women in blue, and the community currently is trust in the police is very low. I would say the community they do uh, collaborate with us um, uh, with the recent research which uh, clearly indicate that um, uh, the issue of a trust within the, po uh, the, the police and the communities is very low. Uh, it's an issue which uh, one has to attribute in terms of the research because uh, some of the issues is um, uh, based on a specific numbers of the research. But yes, of course, uh, one will say we have to work on the interventions in, in, in ensuring that we deal with those issues, uh, like those issues which have indicated for collaborating with the community. They've come out of research that's been done. So you are addressing, are you addressing these issues, whatever these issues are, to rebuild the trust? Yes, yes, that is what we're doing uh, in ensuring that uh, across the board we have to ensure that we include all our stakeholders because our stakeholders is not necessarily limited to the community also other government departments because there are quite a number of issues which it, it must be decided. frustrating for you as a police officer when you go out as operation okay Mulawi and arrest more than 700 suspects i'm using this example and then prosecution lets you down we, 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 and then people don't get convicted. They don't get sent to jail and wearing orange overalls. You must become a little bit like demotivated, don't you, uh, Major General? Uh, well, uh, uh, one must uh, just indicate that in terms of uh, close working relationships with other government department, it's close. Though other department, they have to do more. Uh, for example, Department of Home Affairs, Department of uh, uh, Labor. And uh, in terms of uh, the NPA, 
we are closely, you know, collaborating. Though those issues, if um, it, the case is not uh, maybe well investigated, uh, one has to look into that, how do we deal with that. But there are forums or their structures which we address those issues and the one of uh, the forum is the provincial joints which we uh, the npa attends to those meetings but i must indicate that the challenges uh, is always there and it's up to us as uh, different government departments to face those challenges and look into how do we develop the ways on which we have to address those uh, challenges while while we, we, i asked for this interview because of of, of the reports I've seen of the success of Operation Lukai Mulao, like the past weekend, there are these challenges that, that you are saying. But, but do you believe that you are winning the war against crime currently in Gauteng? Well, uh, one will uh, say yes, uh, coupled to the challenges or the challenge which I've indicated, um, as I've indicated that uh, the, the, the community is still affected, but uh, one can. Uh, say with confidence to say we are making a difference with this operation I mean 700 people get arrested over one weekend and uh, another weekend it will be a specific number that surely uh, as I always say these people they don't just walk into uh, the police cells or walk into the police station they get arrested is through our effort which we put together with the other uh, partners or the partnership which we are having so it is uh, indeed uh, having an impact in terms of what we are doing and in the major urban areas let's take Ekuruleni uh, Tswane, Johannesburg, you, you also work with those teams there on, 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 the, on, on the ground. And we hear from the various councils, the metro council, that they are also putting an effort in trying of, of fighting crime. So you collaborate with them directly as well. Just as an example, the major metros. Yeah, yes, uh, of course, uh, uh, one has to take note that uh, in terms of uh, the yearly uh, operational plans for the metros or for uh, people who are attached to the metropolis um, those operations they are developed in conjunction with the south african police service and they ultimately get approved uh, by the by the provincial commission of the south african police service in terms of collaborations the collaborations as well we have just to take note that uh, this uh, Operation Ukai Mulao, uh, the provincial one, which is led by the provincial commissioner or either one of his deputies who are acting, it will be in a specific location, for example, in Tswani. Uh, but simultaneously, in Ekuruleni, you will have the very same uh, operation which is taking place with the collaboration of those uh, stakeholders. Yeah. Now, crime is a national problem. I know you represent Gauteng. But uh, would you want to see Operation Ukai Mulao being replicated, that other provinces can, can learn from you? Because crime is a national issue. Uh, let me answer it in this way. Uh, uh, last year, somewhere there on the 15th of May, we appeared before the Portfolio Committee on Police. And uh, as a province, uh, the provincial commissioner, uh, Lieutenant General Elias Mawela, with his uh, management, who appeared there, we made a presentation for this concept of uh, Operation Ukai Mulao. Uh, as it is known that uh, all over, you know, in South Africa, even internationally, uh, this Operation Ukai Mulao is, uh, is uh, well known. Uh, after we have made a presentation, uh, it was accepted that it, it will help if um, uh, it can be seen that um, uh, th those, you know, the best practices and then it can be uh, rolled over. So other provinces can, uh, to, can, can, yeah, can, learn, can, learn, can learn from it. Yeah, can learn from it. Now, now uh, uh, the, the, the case, I want to go back to resources. I know you answered it very broadly, but I just remember a couple of years ago when we heard about shortage of police vehicles, and, and, and lack of, uh, because the resources also coming to training and skills. The other day, the, uh, the, the new commission of the police, uh, uh, General Massimula, he spoke about one of the priorities for him nationally is going to be refresher training for the police to make sure that you are enabled. It's a, it's a, it's a resource. How is Houting doing there 
are, are you guys getting the proper training, uh, including to deal with issues of gender-based violence? Because I've done interviews here where we criticize the police for insensitive way of handling, for example, rape victims. And some of them saying they've given up, they don't want to go and report to the police. Now, you've identified uh, GBV as one of those priority crimes that you're dealing with in the province currently. Though you've got successes with Operation uh, Okae Mulao, how are those kind of resources uh, uh, happening for you? Well, uh, brother, with the viewers, uh, we have to take note that um, what have been directed by the National Commissioner when he unveils his uh, priorities is what we have to work on. Uh, but I must indicate on the aspect of uh, training. Uh, from national, province, uh, districts up until to the station level, we're having a component which is responsible for training human resource uh, development. So training is given a special, special, special attention when it comes to uh, training of the members of the South African Police Service. Each and every year we take an audit where each and every employee or a member have to complete to say, uh, I've got this and okay. that and that and this is the needs and then we prioritize them uh, accordingly so that uh, uh, the human resource uh, development can uh, deal with those causes. This includes uh, the issues of um, uh, the FCS or uh, the cases related to the gender-based violence. Okay. Operation Ukai Mulao is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, Operation Ukai Mulao is here to stay, uh, but we have to mention that um, uh, the, as the South African Police Service, we, we, we are responsible primarily in ensuring that uh, we deal with the crime. This is one of the strategies in ensuring that we deal with the crime. But further than that, there is uh, the stakeholder engagement, of which we have in quite a number of list of people who have, whom we have to collaborate with. And uh, as I've indicated, um, the Operation Ukai Mulao is having, uh, you know, the initial stage, and then uh, is having uh, the Different second phases. stage. Yeah, it's okay. a second phase normalization. And uh, we have to sustain, you know, going forward. Because okay. if we don't do that, uh, you will end up, will not get, the, like the numbers we have indicated, 700 on our last uh, media release on Sunday. Okay. Finally, before I let you go, uh, uh, Deputy uh, Provincial Commissioner, I saw a story the other day, a report that you've offered a reward of 50,000 rand to help find a missing Gauteng girl, Amashe Michelle Tabete, who was last seen accompanying a stranger. In, in Sakane on the 6th of this month and you've promised according to the report police have promised to treat this new information with confidentiality do you have any a, a, any update on this are you aware of this I mean I haven't seen a reward being offered before but uh, just to ask you about this this particular report have you got any update you can share with us yeah, what I can say is that uh, it's a process flow of part of investigation which we do as a South African police service uh, through, you know, proper processes and uh, we then uh, 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 put the reward of which uh, is one of the aspects which will encourage maybe some of the people who do have the information. Any progress in this investigation? It's, it's, uh, thus far, we haven't uh, uh, cracked it. Uh, if one may say in that uh, particular way, uh, but uh, we will work closely with the community and also with people who can provide the information. And uh, as and when uh, we get this case cracked, and uh, we believe that we'll be in a position to can uh, speak to to the media. Okay, I mean, I know we are highly critical of, of the men in, in, in women in blue when things go wrong, but it's good to, to be talking to you today about the successes of Operation Ukai Mulao. Fighting crime is not easy, but it got so many challenges, but it is a multidisciplinary effort, and uh, we'll touch base again. Thank you once again. That's Gauteng's Deputy Provincial Police Commissioner, Major General Tommy Mtombeni, who was with us here, just sharing some of, uh, some of the highlights, successes and progress being made, and challenges, of course, in the fight against crime in Gauteng.